Hi all, it's uh, Mike again with the 74 GMC and I'm hoping that today or this video is going to be the last video of engine removal prep and then I'll try and do a video of actually pulling the engine out. I have some friends that are going to be able to help me tomorrow. So here we are up top. I've got just a few more things I want to kind of finish up getting rid of. I haven't pulled the distributor yet. I'm not certain I'm going to. I probably have to because the manifold's coming out anyway. Um, I just can't tell you how many times I've done engines and somehow managed to get the distributor in 180 out. So uh, I'd love to leave it in, but I probably am going to have to pull it. So right now I'm trying to get some of the fan shroud brackets off. We'll get the water neck off. You know, try to get some more of this wiring freed up. Get it away from the uh, engine. The alternator is still attached, so there's still stuff attached to it. So. We'll see what we can get done but I'm gonna start with uh, this bracket right here it's actually a lifting loop but it's kind of containing the uh, wire harness um, a lot of people you know talk about you know as a matter of fact if you if you happen to go and watch that uh, um, video that I, I recommended yesterday of uh, from Andrew you know he likes to do everything with a a ratchet to start with and, and I understand that you don't want to break things if you don't have to and and uh, obviously that's not my goal to break anything either but I do like these uh, electric impacts because they they give kind of an impact and they, they tend to free stuff that's uh, that's stuck now if it starts you know really bearing down and it doesn't break loose then I, I'm kind of uh, with Andrew then I'll start getting some uh, spray out and uh, and, and work it back and forth with a with a ratchet but as long as they just pop free I, I like to use this it saves time and the like so that's the last of the fan shroud I shouldn't say the last of the fan shroud brackets there's still one down underneath and I'm just gonna leave this bolt here for now um, I'll put it back in that hole sometimes when you got special bolts like this one where there's a stud on it I like to put them back in the hole just so I remember where they go. So let's see what's this gonna oh, wrong size. Another thing if you know I like I bring my socket bars out here to work with, and if you take one socket off and put it back on, it saves a lot of time of looking for them. too loose and again in a lot of these cases I'm going to replace these bolts anyway so we got to get that loose because the water pump uh, apparently does that maybe it doesn't have to come off but they uh, they were highly recommend it because uh, it makes it easier getting this massive motor out through the hole I was thinking about trying it without it um, but remember what I said, I'm going to try and do this video today such that uh, if someone was just doing the front, like putting a front main seal or something on, that uh, this video would uh, suffice for, for doing that. And it would, uh, like I said, I think you're going to have to pull the radiator to do it because you're going to have to get a harmonic balancer puller in there and everything else. So, like I said, just kind of... This video may be boring because, uh, you know, I'm kind of filming everything. I will have a couple of breaks in it uh, because of uh, moving to the front. But, you know, I'm not really worried about these hoses, but I always try to break them loose. Um, I don't like cutting them because oftentimes if you cut them, you scratch the, the, the nipple and then it can leak there. So let's see what happens here. There we go. One water neck off. Do I'm hooked. Ah, there we go. And you can see the thermostat down in there, I hope. What we're going to do is uh, make sure that what we put back in there is what they call a fail open. So they've des specifically designed it so that if it fails, it fails in the open position. And basically what you lose is, is heat. Uh, in the vehicle you don't uh, overheat the vehicle so that's uh, always always a bonus what else we got here I could take this off I'll probably do that from the front 
Okay, we got a couple of vacuum lines. Try and free those up. Like I said I'm trying to get everything done from up top that needs to be done, and then we'll move to the front. And I wondered for a while when I couldn't see it what this wire was, but that's the oil pressure sending wire, so I'll label that here in a minute. What else we got? That vacuum line leads to uh, a few things. So this was some wires that I got to get into a harness. This went to the cruise control. And this goes up to a vacuum gauge that I that was uh, I didn't add, but uh, somebody added that was on the side panel. So oh, it's kind of nice to be able to watch your, your your engine vacuum. And then this one I'm sure is to the brake booster. And when we get around to the front, you're going to see that uh, my coach. I, I've, I've never seen this before, but I'm guessing uh, it's a dual source uh, vacuum booster. So I think at one point, I don't know if you remember in a few videos earlier, I had taken off a goofy looking bracket off the front of the, you know, somebody added, excuse me, and uh, it was for an air pump. And so I, I think that it had, or a vacuum pump rather, I think it had a uh, vacuum assist, um, an electric pump that created vacuum to add to the engine vacuum or in place of the engine vacuum to uh, to help with the brakes and I don't know if you've ever driven one of these things and had the engine quit on you but the power steering uh, almost immediately goes away and uh, it is it is very very difficult to steer one of these things when the power steering or, or, or not yeah, well steering is one or it's very difficult to stop one of these things when the, you don't have vacuum to the brake booster so that's something I'm probably going to look to uh, add back in. So these are valve cover bolts that, uh, oops, of course, two different sizes. Always nice. Free up this vacuum line. So. Hopefully the music in the background isn't bothering anybody. I was hoping that it, uh, it wouldn't be a uh, annoying. I kind of like to listen to music while I work. I've been shutting it off when I was doing these videos, but uh, today I decided I would leave it on. Just again, just putting those bolts back in. More than likely, I'll find some nice looking stainless to replace those with, but uh, for now, you know where they go. Everything else up here looked to be free of the motor. I guess that's route that back around. And like I said, I do want to clean up the wire harness on this. It was a little bit, a uh, little bit cluttered. I'll try and get the wires off the alternator if I can. From up here. Great booster hose. We'll take that out of the way. Now. It's like a pretty good size alternator. I can't feel the can't feel the thing so we'll just I'm just gonna get the bolts out that are here in the back and then I'll reset up up front and we'll go around there I 
again, I think these little impacts do a great job for breaking fasteners loose. I think they put a fair amount of torque in quickly without winding the bolt up to like break the bolt. there because I don't have a wrench to hold in the front. All right, I'm going to, I think I'm going to pause the video and we'll get set up, uh, set up in the front. See if we can't get to that uh, front main seal. See you in a bit. All right, so I'm going to crawl up in there and hopefully get the rest of that uh, accessory drive off, uh, get the power steering pump off and set off to the side and such. And I don't know if you can see, you can see this thing hanging around right here. That's what must have gone to that auxiliary vacuum pump because, like I said, my, my vacuum brake booster has two ports on it and this bottom, the, the this hose here, if you can, yeah, you can see me kind of moving it. That's the one we just disconnected off the engine, and then this is a an extra. So, like I said, I think that could be a valuable uh, valuable add-on. Get my old butt down here. I was kind of hoping to sit in here, but let's see what has to happen. Get this stuff done. Kind of tight in here, tighter than I thought it was going to be. All right, so our alternator is loose, belts are getting loose. This one here, of course, there's a nut on the back. Set that up inside and uh, try and keep all that alternator stuff together. One belt. You know, some people just cut the belts because they know they're replacing them, but uh, I, uh, I don't know that I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to replace them, but I don't know that, uh, that I'll know what size is necessarily because this has been, there's no air conditioning on it anymore. So nice to have the old ones for reference. All right. Main alternator bolt loose. Set that up there. Okay. What did I miss? Sometimes there's a sleeve. It doesn't look like it looks like it's just there. It's a little snug in there. I'm hoping to get it to where I could get to the wires. There's a lot of that. Probably should have taken that dipstick out of the way.
it is moving. It's just not it's moving very quickly. Best laid plans of mice and men here. There's a bracket that I can't get from the back. Won't be able to get this one though. That might help us. steering pump of course there. there we go that's what I couldn't get my finger on to disconnect before is this and hopefully this whole video isn't just looking at the back of my head squeeze in here. All right. There we go with success. We got the of course that nut that I want rolled underneath the jack stand. So all right. Probably we have to go back up top for some of those other bolts. Let's see what we need to get the power steering pump clear. And again, this does kind of give you how tight a fit it is in here. So far, it's being kind. I'm going to the ground. Else. Oh. That's a little easier on my back, I can tell you that. Look at that. Should have brought my portable light. Alright, so it's a bolt down on the bottom. There's actually a bracket mounted to the final drive as well under here.
couple small. There's a couple fasteners that are uh, down here close to the pulley. One of them it looks like it might even have to reach through the pulley. Should be it. Size again. Yeah, not really lined up. That's going to stink. Thing. Sorry about the silence. can't see but there's a nut that goes basically from right a bolt I should say that goes from here right through the power steering pump all the way to the back and I'm just trying to undo that just ratcheting the Opened end wrenches can save a lot of time at some points too. I haven't always had them, but what do they do? I like them. Just about got it. Probably the washer on there. Kind of seems that maybe that one's still attached. There we go. Okay. There's the other belt off. attaching our power steering pump. There should be nothing but to the right orientation. And then position this somewhere out of the way. I should have brought a bungee cord with me. And that'll do for 
coming out of the way. Rip some oil out of it would be the only problem. Whew. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting to see a little more. Oh, the water pump pulley will come off. We took the fan off a long time ago. Never took that off, so. Oops, I don't want to do that for too long. I'll leak the trans fluid all over down here. So we got one more fan shroud bracket. Different size. All the grease built up on it, it's hard to tell. Again, I hope we're not just looking at the back of my head. There's more than one bolt than that, of course. case of overkill just because of this bracket and everything for what it was doing. But to get in that water pump. Um, it holds this on okay. I think we have a bracket. What size that is. So this is back onto that uh, oh, mount for the dif differential. I guess we'll have to get the whole thing out here in a minute, but I think I want to prop that up first. Let me see if I can get in here with the mess I got. Timing bracket. So you can see this would be lots of fun if you were. Oh, isn't that nice? That bolt's broke off. Oh, we'll have to figure out how to get that one out. It's not a fresh break. I didn't do it. It's kind of loose, it looks like. So it'll be a little arc welder work on the on the block once I get it out. Yeah, can you imagine doing this with the radiator still in? I have to reposition myself. My back's killing me. All right. So you guys got a pretty good view of the pretty good view of the engine there. You can see the. We're going to have to get that harmonic balancer off, which is probably going to be a joy in order to get to the front of 
front main seal. And then of course when I take this water pump out, inevitably it's going to leak coolant on me. Be another joy. Okay, those are a different size. I'm going to get the crank pulley off next. It's going to take a little more than that. I'll have to get a, go get a hammer. Oh, I guess I loosened that before. The lower radiator hose will try and pop off here. Hoses on. That's one thing I'm not gonna not reuse probably yeah, for anything is a is a hose. All right, looks like we're pretty close to that water pump. It'd be nice to have that pulley out of the way. center bolt is part of it. There we go. Have to go get us a, a hammer. There's a couple of bolts behind it that I may forget to. Let's see, because crawling out of here just doesn't sound like any fun to me. I don't know if you can see it, but right behind the water pump, there's a small, or on the water pump, right behind this pulley, there's a small fastener, just like this one up here. So I'll put a new water pump on it too. I make, uh, I make aluminum ones. Maybe use one of those. The other thing we want to see is what the timing chain looks like on this thing. This is one of my favorite little tools. It's a, it's a nut driver for the sockets. It has a place to put the wrench in the back. It's kind of handy. All right, that's all the little ones. Let's see what it takes to use the bigger one now. Not 
leaving out. I'm just changing tools here. Let's see what happens with this one. All right. That came out. Probably should have been the same size as those others. It's just the last time somebody took it apart, they didn't lost it or whatever. Imagine you're doing all this just to get to the that front main seal. You're not actually pulling the engine, so you got to put all this back together in here, which I may have to do anyway, depending on how how big it is to get out one water pump. Not too shabby. All right, I guess I got to crawl out of here. Get a wrench for that. Get a socket big enough for that. I guess I could take this guy. Yeah, that's in the way of that. So I'll be back. Ouch. That was my head on the bumper. Oof. Oh, it feels good to stand up, I can tell you that. I'm back, I think I got the tools I need to finish some of this here. I will have to pause one more time, I didn't bring my harmonic balancer remover. Get that tool out, but uh, I'm gonna try, and I did bring some, some wood to try and prop up the Final drive, so I can take that bracket off. Um, there's also a bracket on the other side that holds the extension shaft. I'll have to get something under there, but right now I got a bunch of absorb all under there because I thought I was going to lose a lot of coolant. That'll probably happen when I start to pick the motor, but we'll get this area cleared out and let, it, let that absorb all take that up. I, I don't know if everybody's familiar with absorb all, but that's a, a product that it's basically kitty litter or light kitty litter. It's actually a lot cheaper than kitty litter because kitty litter has a lot of deodorizers and everything in it, but it's a, it's just a absorbent. You spill something on the floor, you put it down. Uh, a lot of things, it just about will suck them right out of the concrete even, so that's kind of nice. All right, ouch. Here's my head again. I'm just going to look for it and see if one of these pieces of wood or whatever is pretty close to what I need to hold that final drive up on this side. There's such a, until we, until such a time as we lower down the transmission. Yeah, that's pretty good. I got that. I'll give you later. I'll crawl under here when I take the bolts out for the torque converter and I can show you what I've got going on there. Yeah, if you're laying down, it's much more comfortable. Let's see what we can do. Oh. Need to be a gymnast to get in here. I did bring my impact for my air impact for that crankshaft bolt. Let's see what happens. Sometimes they come right out, sometimes they're a bugger. In this particular case, it came right out. That's kind of nice. So it doesn't look like that's what was holding the pulley on, so let's see if a a bigger persuader will I don't want to bend the I also don't want to beat too much on the 
crank bearings. So, maybe that stays on until we get. that going for us. I forgot the wrench. Did the bring the wrench big enough to take the take the uh, fuel line off. Just kind of in the way of that. I guess I gotta go get prepared with a harmonic balancer puller. Mount for the differential. Maybe I can successfully get that out of here while we're here. I didn't want to make this about you watching me go back and forth for tools. So basically, I have the front bolt out of the mount for the differential. There's one more back here. Not sure I can gain access to it until it might be one of those things that has to be in place before the engine comes in and I may have to take there's a long bolt that goes through it. I hope not but Actually, it looks like it's on it. I don't have room with that extension to get my impact in there. This will be a little bit of a fight today. It doesn't make my back feel very good.
this other than pulling the harmonic balancer and a couple of these uh, other brackets. And, uh, getting pretty darn close. Let's just see if that one wants to break loose or not. One of the exhaust manifold bolts, which are often not friendly. But some days you get lucky. And feel free to forward fast this through this to see anything of interest that you might want to see. pretty well done over here. I just had to rest for a minute. I actually had to, my back can only take so much suction hole. And this is typical, you get into something like this and you end up using what you have because you're too lazy to crawl out from under here and go get something else. As luck would have it, that nut driver that I told you about, it's going to do the job. And that little bracket's off. I'm not sure if the exhaust manifolds have to come off, I'll figure that out. And for now, I'm going to put that bolt back in. Just so I know where it goes. Plus, it's holding kind of the, the heater tube or the heat tube for the, the chimney for the warm air to the carburetor. I'm gonna, just going to take the fuel pump off. Soon I'll be taking this off and plating it over, but I think when the engine goes back in, it's going to get the, it's going to get the um, carburetor back on it, not fuel injection. There's that. That ride's probably on the camshaft to drive it. Probably leak a little gas at some point, but Let's slip those two bolts back in for grin. Alright. 
So I guess the next thing is to pull that harmonic balancer and I'll have to get my tool for doing that. I'll take a little break from out under here and shut the camera off and we'll get ready to do that. Try not to bang my head on a bumper again this time. <clears throat> need to buy a hoist that's big enough for these things. All right, so this is what the harmonic balancer puller looks like. And basically what's going to happen is I have the bolt that we took out of the, out of the uh, crankshaft. And we're going to match it up with one of these adapters. And once we have it matched up, that'll thread into the crankshaft. And then this has a bearing built into it. And uh, we'll put it this way. And in this particular case, it was four bolts. So we'll have two of these longer bolts will go through into the harmonic balancer. And then this will thread onto that adapter. And when we, we get it all set, then we'll tighten it against the crank with this. And then we'll just spin this, or excuse me, I'm sorry, you can't see it. Spin this backwards. This surface will be against that bearing and it'll pull that off. So I'll get set up to do that and uh, we'll show you how it goes. All right, I'm hoping that this will allow you to watch and see what, uh, what I'm doing here. So I found the correct adapters. So... Uh, tired of being bent over inside of there I'm going to be bent over out here but you can see there's the adapter right there I'm going to thread that in a good ways let a lot of threads engage you don't want to damage them that's the whole point of this is not damaging the threads so here's the actual thing that does the pulling. And it threads on there. And the bearing piece. making sure we got enough room and then I'll find the appropriate length bolts. These are the ones I know fit. Well, it's probably, this, these are the same thread. No, nope, those are metric. Trick also. I guess we'll have to go with these and put washers behind them if I have to. Just walk back to get a couple of crescent wrenches. Just slide under here. That's what I love to do. Alright. Well, 
long as you guys can see, we'll be all right here. to go. Sure about a pillow. Spin this out for right now. Make sure it looks like we're hitting about even. Okay. You can see the pullers installed. Wrenches and so I can hold this. We don't want this to turn. That's not the that's not what's supposed to turn. See, it's just slowly turning it out. I'm hoping that those uh, that you don't have to go find some bolts that are uh, shorter. But this will get it out far enough, but it might not. It might have to go. But at least it's working. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, I own this tool just because of. All the motor work and stuff I've done over the years but uh, for those of you who don't these are the types of things that like AutoZone or O'Reilly's they loan you basically you buy the tool you pay the money for the tool and then they let you return it which is kind of nice I do that with some things if it's a real unique thing that, that I don't think I'm ever gonna use again I'll do that with uh, other tools as well. Like, uh, you know, I'll, where I'll buy, sometimes I'll, you know, Harbor Freight certainly has its place. Their stuff maybe isn't the greatest in the world, you know, for longevity. But if I think it's something that maybe I'm only going to use once, you know, I might, and it's real expensive and you can get a pretty good buy on it at Harbor Freight, then. Get it from Harbor Freight. I think we're going to have to reposition. Don't cut the other bolts. That kind of stinks, but it is what it is. Maybe I can find some big washers. I'd like the uh, video to be more exciting for you and you guys spending a lot less time just watching me go find stuff. But, you know, if you're really doing this, this is what it's really like. So, I just I want to make sure you get the idea. You know, it's not, everything doesn't work on the first try. Everything, you know, all the bolts don't uh, 
come out when you want them to. You can actually see there's that broken off bolt that I'm going to have to uh, extract later. I think of what I might have here close to me that I could use as a spacer, like maybe. To work or not, just again, I'm, I'm being lazy. I don't want to. Walk over and try and find bolts. Yeah, that's too thick. That's not going to work. That's worth a, worth a try. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Hopefully with the right size bolts or the right length of bolts, I should say. Sorry about that. That was my head on the tripod. No Rube, Rube Goldberg today. My buddy Brad loaned me that tripod, so hopefully you're seeing all that pretty good. Be right back. Well, I'm glad I put you on pause. It took me a minute there. I couldn't find any bolts that were the right length, so I found some nuts to put on top of them. In between the bolt and the Spacer. Let's see what that looks like. Hopefully that gives us the length we need to finish pulling this thing off. Those are going to be in the way of me turning this nut. Always a, always a challenge. We have a visitor. One second. I'm back. I got a couple of bolts that hopefully are long enough to finish this job without having them in my way.
ain't very many threads. You'll see, I've got a couple in there. couple more turns. The other thing that's kind of nice about this puller is that it's attached to the crankshaft so that that thing isn't going to fall on my head. I can see it's completely out of the seal now. taking that out and we should have it in our hands. I'm going to try to do it from up top. It doesn't fall on my melon. wrong, I meant hoping to drop it, but team.
So there you have it. Looks like we're all the way to the front main seal. It almost looks like you could get that seal out without um, without taking that front motor mount off. So uh, that's kind of that could be kind of cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up some of this mess I got going here, and uh, we'll come back with you in a little bit. All right, everybody. Kind of back. Three positions.